So I'm not sure whether I was muted there. So I'm going to kind of start this slide over. So the great thing about power series is that we can algebra them into a geometric series. Um, think about what a geometric series is. Oftentimes we can. A R to the nth power. So some stuff that doesn't involve some just ex constant coefficient expressions, which is really what the coefficient of uh, Taylor series R, and then the power bit, which looks like this. So it looks pretty similar if you think about it. And we might do, need to do a little bit of algebra, but we can usually algebra them into the format of a geometric series. So by, uh, I don't know, uh, slapping that negative one into the numerator and breaking up our denominator of two to the n plus one power as two to the n times two to the one in our second line here, uh, we get, hey, a whole bunch of things raised to the nth power and everything else is all raised to the nth power, which allows us to do that. And everything else is just a constant out in front. So this fits the format of a geometric where we have a and r to the nth power. And our radius is, or the, not radius, yeah. Radius is just that uh, expression over there. So continuing along that logic, what do we know about geometric series? We know that they converge when r is less, the absolute value of r is less than one. So this now becomes a relatively straightforward algebra, uh, uh, algebra task. Why did that show up twice? Yeah, which we can then algebra into shape to determine the interval convergence for our series. So from the first line to the second line, notice that a negative inside of an absolute value, doesn't matter. It's just going to kick out the positive or negative version. So I chose to simplify the expression inside the absolute values first and then deal with the uh, inequality. Uh, so then expanding the inequality, whatever was in the absolute value, we take less than one and greater than negative one. And then we just straightforward multiply both sides by two. And then uh, lastly, we add two everywhere to arrive at our answer that we have uh, that this thing converges on the interval from zero to four. Now, since it's um, geometric, we don't technically need to check the endpoints, I don't think, but it doesn't hurt to do so. And sometimes maybe, maybe I'll ask you to determine the convergence of a Taylor series, which you can't turn into a geometric series, and you just have to apply some tests like the ratio test, hint, hint. Um, you'll have to check the endpoints in that situation, so let's check them now just for practice. So checking our first endpoint at x equals zero, we plug zero into our series expansion and we get that it becomes this expression on the right. I kind of broke up the denominator there with i's to the hopefully reducing some stuff. Um, next, I separated negative two to the nth power as negative one to the nth times two to the nth. That way I can reduce away these in my next line. And lastly, combining um, negative one to the nth power twice gives me negative one to the two n power. And two n is always going to be even. And negative one to an even power is always going to go to one. So that allowed me to reduce that away. So what am I really left with? Just the sum of one half. And if you apply the divergence test there, um, the limit does not go to zero. Therefore, it is divergent by the divergence test. At the other end point, when x equals 4, um, you got 4 minus 2 becomes 2n. And then straight away, we can reduce away those. And we have kind of an alternating version of the series that we just looked at, which fails the alternating series test because we um, the limit doesn't go to 0 as well, uh, and so uh, which is divergent by the alternating series test. It's not actually true. I apologize. Um, it's going to, it fails the alternating series test. But then if you take and you take the uh, uh, divergence test gives us the divergence that we're after because it will, the limit will not go to zero. It'll oscillate. And that's it for Taylor series.